see. Hey, that. it works. Hey, it's a miracle. <laughs> How okay. You doing? Good. Well, this is this is very exciting. I'm wearing these because I'm sitting outside in my backyard, so and it's noisy. So because I live yeah. in LA. Well, you you did say you might wear a hat because the quarantine hair is out of control. So. It's pretty real. It's real. My wife just said to me, she's like, "Why are you wearing a hat?" I was like, "You know why." <laughs> you haven't done the self haircut yet. People have. People. Have oh God. It. Oh, you know, my wife has shaved my head. It's got. It's it's barely been nuts. Meanwhile. What's your deal? Why does your hair look so great? No, dude, this is like, it's crazy. The humidity and the length. I haven't cut it in months. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go all the way now. I'm, I'm just going to try to do like the Momoa thing. It's annoying. It works on you. It's a, that, pa that you, you, you like look good in a pandemic. That's not fair. I never knew I had curly hair going into this. This is a new thing. <laughs> Wait, where are you? You said humidity. Where do you live? Uh, well, Toronto. We're up in Toronto. So oh, it's cool, been, like, cool. A lot of like stormy hot days up here. So it's been like, yeah. But well, it looks like we got everybody back that there would be a little trouble getting this thing started. But you know what? I think we you requested and I requested at the same time or something. It like froze. It happens. The streams get crossed. These things, these things happen. But it's we, good. you know, you're never supposed to cross the streams. I so, bought that from, from Ghostbuster. From, from Ghostbuster. Exactly. <laughs> now, we haven't seen each other in a, a bit, but I guess we keep running into each other in the coolest and strangest places. The first time we met, I don't know if you recall, but I was in San Francisco for a Pixar shoot and it was yes. really cool that it was San Francisco where, I mean, Full House is set and I'm in my hotel and I'm like, it was literally like an episode of Full House. I was like, I'm, I'm like, is that, is that Scott? It was like the episode where like DJ goes to Disneyland. That's Disney exactly World. right. And I was like. Well, you, I, I, that was a weird thing because you know, that was when, hold on, my dog wants to say hello. Say hi, buddy. Say hey. Hi. <laughs> anyway, what happened was, you know, that was our first, my first family trip after Fuller House aired, season one came out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think about it. You know, Netflix, it's weird. It's not like it just comes out and it's a premiere and then it's on every, it just like happened. And then yeah. we went to San Francisco, didn't even think about the Fuller House connection. It was just an easy yeah. trip from LA. And, yeah. you know, wanted to take my son to see like the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz and all that. And it was bananas because people show up in San Francisco and they've got Full House, Fuller House on the brain. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize I was walking into a madhouse. People went nuts. You know? and yeah. That was, it was a very weird thing. It was, I think that was when I realized and my wife realized, wow, this show is like a really big hit. This is, a, we couldn't walk five feet. You know, we thought we were just going to be laying low at Fisherman's Wharf. My son fell in love with the arcade. We would go to play video games there every day, but yeah. it was a, it was a disaster. I mean, in a good way. Yeah, or I've seen people literally go and try to recreate the opening in San Francisco. They ride like <laughs> this. And it's it's a it's a thing. But the show, I mean, there's no surprise that there was such a demand for it to come back with with Fuller House. Was that something that was in in the works for a while? Was there always kind of rumblings of of the show returning in some way? Or no really? way. I mean, who who would have thought? I mean, you know, it, it, you, the whole idea of reboots now, I guess, is much more commonplace because Fuller House was such yeah. a big hit. But before that. I mean, the, when they called me and they said, we're going to do a reboot of Full House, and I don't even think it had a name then. And they said, we're going to do an episode, like a reunion episode, where we're going to bring all the old folks back. You know, that was, I, I think they were more polite about it. They called us the legacy cast <laughs> instead of the old cast. And they said, <laughs> um, so they sent me a script and I had agreed to do it. And, and there was like all this stuff about, I walk into the party and DJ says, hey, Steve, great to see you. And it's like, hey, there's her old boyfriend, Steve. And she says, how are the wife and kids? And I say, oh, they're fine. Sorry, they couldn't make it to the party. So when I saw the script, I assumed this was just one episode. It was just like a cute thing. Oh, there's her old boyfriend. And then I got an email from them later saying, hey, man, you were really funny at that table, Reed. Would you consider coming back for another one? I was like, yeah, sure. And then I came in another one and another one and another one. And it turned into dozens and dozens. It turned into five seasons of television. It was crazy. Yeah, it's it's unreal, and it's and it's all come to an end uh, again. And there was so many not not to spoil it, but there were a lot of tears in the in that last episode. And oh God, I feel yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of them were were real. Is that is it? Was that right? Was there a lot? Oh of my God, it was a bloodbath. People were crying. There was like we had to stop. We had to like pause. <laughs> you know, like the, the, like the, they, I'm sure that in post in editing they had to cut out a lot of the the dead air of people just standing there crying and trying to get it together. I had a weird reaction. And it's really funny because it, this is character. This is just like a little, this is me, which yeah. is like in, in like moments of great intensity where I, people expect me to cry. I just don't. 
Like when my son was born, I was like, I'm not crying. I must be dead inside. And then, of course, like two days later, I burst into tears. And, that, and with Fuller House at the finale, everyone's sobbing on the set. And I was like dry as a bone. I was very emotional because I was sad. But yeah. my wife said to me, she's like, dude, you better cry because people are going to think you don't care. I'm like, I'm sorry. It won't come. <laughs> It was yeah, it was it was emotional. There are so many people watching in the in the comments right now. They're saying, "Yeah, I bawled. Uh, I could not stop crying." People, I cried the whole yeah. the whole finale in real life. It was a, it was an emotional ride. I think a lot of people grew up with these characters, and we were so happy to see them come back, only to to leave again yeah. five seasons later. No, I get it, and I'm very grateful for that. I mean, the people who love the show, I mean, they people really feel like it's family, you know, because it's on. I mean, this is a weird thing, but I have I have a son who's ten. And he is totally having nothing to do with me. He's obsessed with Full House and Fuller House. It's like on all the time. Like when my wife comes into the kitchen or the living room or whatever, she hears, you know, she comes downstairs and she hears me talking as a teenager or, or Fuller House. Either way, she walks in and I'm making out with DJ and it's not great for her. But, uh, but the point is, is that those characters and those stories, I mean, it's on all the time on a loop in our house. And as a result, the cast feels like family and I feel like for a lot of people all over the world that's how it feels people just it's sort of the background to their life yeah it's it's true and it's inspired so many people too I mean me I I, I got started in radio a few years ago and my name is Tanner so people right away started calling me DJ Tanner and then <laughs> and then the whole thing kind of stuck so in a way yeah like it's just, this is weird that we're doing this because it's literally DJ and Tanner and Steve in a weird alternate universe right now. So this that's is... really funny. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you Mr. Tanner. Yeah, well, I actually, actually, I've had the pleasure of interviewing a few of the other guys, they like Candace Cameron and whatnot, who, who handed oh, me cool. the name temporarily, but I think she needed it back for Fuller House. But uh... oh, that's hilarious. But yeah, it's, it's I have cool somebody to... gave me a shirt that says my favorite DJ is DJ Tanner. And it's really oh, is it cool. Like, is it like, oh, dude, nice. <laughs> that's hilarious. You know what? Mine is different, but it's the same, the same text. <laughs> Mine it okay. like has a turntable and it says DJ and you know it looks it's like uh, like if you didn't know you wouldn't know you know what I mean. We should have coordinated. We could have. I know. Shirt. You know what the uh, funny thing is? I thought about wearing it. I you know I'm no fun. I'm I'm I don't. <laughs> well, I, I have a couple like burning you know full house fuller house questions for me. Uh, for one, did you get to keep any of the clothes because your wardrobe through through especially through full house was pretty was pretty on point so well you know the funny thing is there's been a lot the show business has changed a lot in the yeah. past 100 years that I've been in it because when I was a kid at you know and maybe it was just the shows I was on or whatever but you know and maybe I shouldn't be saying this but I used to back my Jeep Cherokee up to the wardrobe trailer and just fill it up at the end of the season I took everything you know Amazing. I had and you know I still have I, you know, from those days, I still have my leather jacket that DJ gave me in that episode where I gave her that lame Daytona Beach college sweatshirt or whatever. And she gave me that fancy leather jacket that, yeah. and um, I, uh, um, I still have that. And, but in those days, yeah, I used to wear, it, it, it was almost like a mix. Like I, I, I would wear my own clothes on the show sometimes. And yeah. then I would take all the wardrobe from the show that I liked. So when I watch old episodes now, I'm like, I think that was my sweater vest. I don't know, you know, <laughs> or maybe it became my sweater vest after I stole it at the end of the season. But this show was a little bit, you know, I think t things have changed in the entertainment business a little. You can't just do that. You can't just walk into wardrobe and take everything. But I, I definitely, you know, might have hung on to a few key pieces of wardrobe. Okay. <laughs> and do you, and there's a heavily debated topic in the, you know, the full house world, favorite, favorite uncle. Do you have a favorite? Are you a Joey? Are you a Jesse guy? What do we... Uh... God, that's really tough. I mean, they all yeah. have qualities that I admire. Yeah. I mean, per our conversation, Jesse's hair, you can't touch. Um, as a voice actor, I admire Uncle Joey's voice efforts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, as far as Danny goes, you know, he's my father-in-law now. I got to, you know, be respectful. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy. You know, it's really funny because, you know, when I first worked on the show and I was a teenager and those guys were grown-ups, it was like a... You know, that, like that sort of creates a, you know, like a barrier, you know, like we, we were we were friends, but I was still a kid and they were adults. Now we're all old and it was a totally different dynamic. It was just fun being grown ups together. It was cool. And the biggest question I think I've had since the beginning is what, what does John Stamos's hair feel like? Have you ever got to touch it? Oh, yeah, I've run my hands through it. It is oh, just it is luxury. It's just luxury. It it's, is. Uh, you know, um, 
knew it, it really it really is amazing the thing that makes the thing that drives me crazy about his hair is yeah. how it hasn't changed at all you no. know as as we you know there were a lot of jokes on the, i'm not going to show my hair right now but there were a lot of jokes on the show at my hair's expense you know like you know like in the first episode i say i got divorced and i lost half my money and half my hair and that thus began a, a, a series long run of jokes about how when i was a teenager i had this amazing hair and now it's kind of just hair and stamos's hair has just gotten better i don't know if he made some kind of a deal with the devil i don't know if it's a greek thing i don't know if he just you know just has like this some secret formula i don't know what it is but i, I admire that hair it, it is, is real uh, hair goals right Who I has, know. yeah you have great hair i, I just keep harping Thank on you. it because i'm jealous but like i'm trying to the only actor i can even think of who has hair that even touches john's maybe patrick dempsey he's got that rock solid hairline that's true i don't that's know true. it's you tough. know and, he's like in a league of his own man he's like yeah. hair like the, the pinnacle of the hair pyramid yeah he really is and he knows it yeah he's true <laughs> and unless, unless they have always wanted to know because you know right in the middle of you know full house was getting going you you booked another massive uh gig as the voice of aladdin which yes. is which is so cool how how did how did that all come together and how did you balance that with with full house i feel like that was you Probably know, a lot of uh, voiceover. You know. Well, first of all, that, that was just the lucky break. That was literally just an audition that that went well. I have a thing that happens, which is that if I think something's like a big deal, if I like work myself up, then I freak out and I blow it. If I don't think it's that big, if I'm like, if I don't think it's a big deal, then I tend to bring, it brings out the best of me. And so, you know, like, uh, you know, I just I'm just more relaxed. And so. I went to the audition for Aladdin and it was like an after school thing. You know, it was like, um, uh, oh, my Amazon package is almost delivered. That's funny <laughs> doing this on my phone. Um, I'm getting a lot of um, alerts while we're chatting. But I, it was literally like an after school audition that my mom yep. drove me to. And I said, what's it for? And she said, some cartoon. I was like, what do you mean like a cartoon? Because I had never auditioned for voiceover work before. I had never done, I had literally done one voice commercial as a kid in Florida. And that was it. So um, I went into it thinking, you know, some cartoon and not the stakes were very low, which is why I think I did a very good job at the audition. And um, it, yeah. and then and then doing it was really, you know, it was like a, an after school job. It was sort of like, you know, you would it was like, you know, you, voiceover work is a really casual thing. There's no hair and makeup. You show up and you just uh, you drink a lot of water so your voice doesn't get scratchy and you just do it. It's really fun. And of course, you know, Robin Williams voicing the genie who would have just turned 69 just about a, about a week ago. Did you ever have a chance wow. to work with, with Robin? Yeah. On, on, you did, okay. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, I was his biggest fan. So for me, that was when I did, I was worried that I would choke because I was just so starstruck. I mean, ever since I was a tiny little kid, I mean, before I could even talk, I used to like Mork and Mindy before I even understood English. And, um, and then, um, you know, Dead Poet Society was and remains maybe my fa one of my favorite movies. And so I just, in Good Morning Vietnam, I mean, you know, his, he was just like a hero of mine and he was so funny and a mega, mega movie star. So meeting him was intimidating, but he was so cool and casual in the, in the uh, recording studio that he just sort of put me at ease. I think he could tell that I was losing my mind. And, uh, and, and, uh, he was very, he was, he, he was chill. The only time he wasn't chill is when we were recording and then he turned into Robin Williams and, you know, but as, as a person in between takes or going over the storyboard or the script or whatever, he was just, um, you know, just a dude. Yeah. That's so, that's so cool, man. I, I actually was just going through like memory lane, looking at photos from the premiere and things like that. And it's, it's so cool to, to see, you know, you guys together and, you know, doing that film. It's such an iconic movie now so much so that you know we've made a live action version yes which, uh, just i see you have the poster behind you yeah well a canadian boy uh mina masood who just grew up down this down the street from where oh I no way now. but yeah like did, did you was there ever talk of maybe you getting a little cameo in this bad boy or never what? never came up nobody asked no? you know oh. but i i know you know what i heard they might be doing a sequel maybe they'll call me this time i don't know but you know i've met mina he is a great guy he is a really lovely sweet cool guy and he told me the story about the audition and you know auditions are like heartbreaking especially for movies with tv it's like a little bit more immediate you know it's like this thing is going to shoot with movies it's like things get pushed or they you know you could audition for something a long time before it actually is a reality and he told me that it was like a 
you know, like a roller coaster waiting to find out if he got that part. And then it was like, you got it, you're going, get on the plane, you go right now, you're going to London. Amazing, yeah, it's, it's yeah. And your whole life has, has changed forever after that point, so. Yeah, and he was great. I took my son to the premiere of that movie and it was so much fun. And we got to meet Mina and meet the cast. Um, of course, Will Smith, my son was freaking out uh, naturally. Um, and so, yeah, so that, was a, that was a good experience. Well, we got a, a ton of fan questions that we're gonna get to in a second before we do so. I, you've done a ton of other things besides, you know, Aladdin and Full House. And I, I thought we could play a little game called Roll Call. <laughs> if I name the job and the, role, and, and the gig, can you tell me the name of the character that you played? Do you think you could do it? It's probably Steve. I was Steve in basically everything. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna dig, let's, let's, dig, let's dig a little deeper. Uh, okay. Okay, towards the, the, the bottom of the, of the filmography, a little show called Erie, Indiana. Do you remember the character you played? No, I don't. I was, I, I mean, it was so many, it was before your grandparents were born. Dude, it was, uh, well, it was, it was Eddie. We'll give you that. Eddie, okay. Eddie. Okay. Eddie. The, the, the shaggy dog? <laughs> that one, I was Wilby. That's right. That was the kid's yeah. name was Wilby. Wilby. That was really fun. A, a Walker, Texas Ranger. Do you remember? Um, God, I don't remember. I remember I got murdered, which was terrifying. That was, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was really fun. That was a weird gig. But um, I don't remember my character. I don't remember my character's name. Guy you that were, gets murdered. Uh, you were Bradley Brad Roberts. Brad Roberts. That's really funny. I remember I was... Guy that gets murdered, number one. Guy that gets murdered. Well, you had a name, so that's good. These <laughs> yeah, numbers, exactly. these, these get easier. Uh, well, by the way, I just want to say, you know, now that I'm a writer, you know, I haven't been an actor, except for yeah. Fuller House. I'm a, I've been a, a writer for many years. That's my, my actual day job. And so once in a while, when you're working on a show or if you have a friend on a show, they'll ask you to do it, you know, like an episode. Like, we have one line. It would be really funny if you came on the show. So yeah. I'm like, sure. So then you end up playing, like, man or, like, guy – yeah. by the pool or whatever and so then on on imdb it looks really sad that you're playing man or whatever you know it's not like a real type named character so from now on i have a rule if i take a, a well either give him a name so it doesn't look sort of like you're just playing dad number seven or whatever or put an adjective like handsome man make it Whoa. like make it like gorgeous man <laughs> and then i'll do it well, in, in Police Academy Five, you, you were you, you were Shark Attack Kid. So shark that's Attack cool. Kid. That's yes. pretty cool. That was very well. You know, the funny thing about that, I was a kid. I was very excited because I loved Police Academy movies. Because yeah. I was eight or nine or whatever, and I got this part, and it was really just like I'm a kid on a raft, and there's a shark about to eat me, and then Tackleberry shows up and points a gun at it and says, "Leave the swimming area now." You know, and the shark turns around and swims away. And somebody told me, or maybe I was clever and figured it out myself, that if I screamed, help, it's a shark, then I would get in the credits. I would have a line. And so I did. I was like, help, it's a shark. And that's how I became Shark Attack Kid, instead of just an That's extra. amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, because you make that jump between, what, extra and, like, background slash, yeah. It's like, it's, or another, it's another, like, pay, pay upgrade, right, isn't it? Like, you go from principal to... I guess so. I don't. I mean, honestly, that movie is that. Now we're going. Now we're going deep into my past. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's uh, this get easier. Uh, a little uh, show, the, the Hercules Hercules animated series. Do you remember who? You now played? that is easy because I just played Aladdin. Okay. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Aladdin. I tend to play Aladdin often. Yeah. House House of Mouse. Uh, Aladdin. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> It, I mean, they're just Aladdin from here on out. Disney Infinity, The Return of Jafar. Yeah, it was a lot of a lot Yeah, of well, you know, because the funny thing is, even though I left my acting career behind, it didn't leave me behind. So, you know, I, you know, I continue to this day to go do re recording sessions for different Aladdin projects that come up, whether it's like a parade at Disneyland or cool. whatever, you know, and any Aladdin, you know, or even just some random product uh you know some of some of them i don't even know if they've come out yet i can't talk about them but like or video games or whatever so you know i was just sort of working around my my writing schedule I and mean, by the way i mean no matter even when i was in college i once went i did a semester abroad in paris and they said well you gotta we gotta pick you up and take you to a recording studio somewhere in paris you know i did i mean even in where else did i, I recorded i did a recording session in tel aviv at israel I'm wow. all over, wherever I am in the world, they track me down and bring me to a recording studio and I do it. It's pretty cool. It's cool, man. And you, never, yeah. you don't have to worry about the hair or anything like that because you can just, as long as you got the voice, we're set. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got a ton of fan questions, so let's uh, get to these uh, real quick. Uh, Absolutely. 
from uh, uh, Miri. Uh, what inspired you to get into acting? Where did it all Where did it all come from? That's a good question. Well, you know, it's funny. I I discovered it very early in life. I was always a very hammy kid, and when I was in third grade, there was a career day at school, and there was a you know a firefighter came, and a, a guy from the Miami Dolphins came, and uh, you know a lot of doctors and lawyers or you know came and. But there was an actor, somebody's uncle or something was a local actor. And uh, he was telling us about his job. And I was like, wait a minute. So all those people on TV, that's, you could just do that. Those are real people that just got a job. You know, it like something clicked and I went home and I begged my parents to help me get into, get an agent or something like that. And so my mom, um, my mom used to play tennis with somebody whose kid did like commercials or catalogs or something. And she gave her the lowdown on how you get into it. And so I begged and begged. And uh, and they helped me get a manager and I went in an audition for a toy commercial and got it. And we were like, well, that's easy. I mean, we didn't realize that there would be 20 more auditions before I actually got another thing, you know, but um, we, you know, we were spoiled. But um, yeah, so that's how I got into it. I found it very early and I really loved it. And uh, yeah, maybe that's why after college, I was kind of ready to try something else because I'd been, you know, doing yes. it felt like old school already at that point. But yeah. I, I I always enjoyed it, and I forgot how much I enjoyed it. And then when Fuller House came along, I was like, "This is great! Like this is really fun, T especially that live show, you know, tape nights with an audience. It's like doing a little play every week. It's great." Sorry about all the noise. My no, that's all right, man. This is a great question. Gardener. Speaking of uh, your your writing, uh, Slynn Owens wants to know what are you writing now? Or are you can, so can you close that with us? Well, you know, actually, the funny thing is I can't. Um, right now I'm working on a couple of, you know, this is the time of year where you sort of like get your development stuff in order. I mean, the funny thing is there used to be a season, you know, traditionally in the summertime, you're developing a pilot or a pitch, or you've got a studio that you're working with and getting ready to take something out. Now, because everything is, there's so much streaming and cable, there isn't so much urgency to get something set up, you know, by Labor Day like I used to. But, um, but I've got a couple of things that I'm, you know, super excited about one thing in particular and um, working on it. And, uh, and, you know, hopefully I'll be back on here with you talking about it. So everybody will watch it. Amazing, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's, it's fun it's, being, you know, being in quarantine isn't so isn't so bad when you're a writer. That's, that's true. I know a lot of people that are like, yeah, this is a great time to like, you have no distractions, you can just sit down, you can get to it. Yeah, kind of. Although, you know, listen, as a, as a husband and a dad and a dog dad and all that stuff, there are definitely some distractions. Well, but, you've been uh, like a part-time teacher basically lately, right? Is that right? Oh my God. Well, minus the part-time. I mean, during the school year, I was, you know, that was a big adjustment getting used to Zoom school. I picked up my yeah. son from school. You know, the funny thing is I, I picked him up from school at the very beginning of the pandemic. And I had a feeling, I was like, they're going to shut this down. There's going to be no school. And I yeah. said to him on the way out the door, I didn't tell him because I didn't want to freak him out. I was like, is there anything in your cubby that you would miss if you didn't see it for a while? He's like, no, what do you mean? I was like, anything that you know, anything special up there that you, he's like, no, let's go. And I was like, all right. And we left and he that hasn't been back. Then. That was in March, March 11th, I think. Woo. So yeah, so it's been, it's crazy, but I'm very proud of him. I'm, I'm very proud of all these kids because they're faced with a challenge that like none of us ever, thank God, knew growing up. And yeah. it's pretty admirable. And the teachers, my God, I mean, they deserve, we should just, they should just mass produce Nobel prizes and just give them out to the teacher. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my wife is an on-set teacher, so she's been- Oh, awesome no way. With, with, yeah, with, with the productions being off and everything, school being off, it's been a weird time, but yeah. Very, yeah, very strange for all of us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. My heart goes out to teachers and anybody who like have to like keep it together and not lose their minds during this time because they have like, you know, real work to do. It's like, uh, it's hard. It's hard to stay sane. Is the noise, is my neighbor's gardener ruining this for us? No, or is it's, it okay? it's okay. It's not bad. Okay, good, good. That's why I put these on, just in case. No, it's okay. And this is a great question. Sabrina, she also says that Brazil loves you, but how does it feel to have fans uh, all over the world? Because so many people are watching this right now. I saw Portugal and, and Russia and, and Mexico. Like, it's, that's got to be a pretty cool feeling. Well, first of all, hi, Brazil. Thank you. I get a lot of very sweet messages from Brazil, so it makes me happy that the show's doing well down there and, uh, and, and, and well-liked. And uh, it's cool having fans all over the world. It's crazy. I mean, it really, you forget. Mm -hmm. And now, now whenever I travel, people will come up to me. The funny thing is, it just depends. I mean, the funny thing is I was working on a show in France 
And in France, I guess Fuller, I mean, I think it's fairly popular, but more of, more often when people would run up to me, you know, kind of like you could tell they were fans of the show, they were visiting from South America or from somewhere else, you know, and the same thing happened when I took my wife and my son, we went to Tokyo last Christmas and the, the Japanese are big fans and that's why we did an episode there. But also um, people would run up to me from Australia, from the Philippines. It was crazy. You know, it's, uh, it's very gratifying. It's cool. cool. It makes you realize, like, first of all, what a small world it is, but also, exactly. yeah. yeah, but it also makes you realize that, like, the work you're doing is, like, reaching a lot of people. And I don't know. I, I like that. And, and it's cool how, like, they pick up on, on little things. Like, this, this question here is, is, do you really like sandwiches as much as Steve does? Because, I mean, he's known, he's known for his appetite. Hell yeah, I super do. I, I'm a bit, you know, the funny thing is I'm a big eater. I'm a big eater. <laughs> I, I really do eat like Steve, you know, I eat a lot and I eat quickly. Like I'm the guy when you sit down at dinner and, and it's yeah. like all of a sudden my dinner's gone because I ate it all and everybody else is just starting. But yeah, no, I definitely, I have a huge appetite. I have a huge enthusiasm for food and it's just a, you know, it's a miracle I don't weigh 800 pounds. All right, well, let's do it. We have time for maybe hopefully a couple more here. So let's- You got uh, it. Uh, what's your favorite memory of shooting Full House from Sun DXM? What, it, what it, do you have you, I mean, it's probably tough to really pick a favorite. The show has so many seasons, so many memories. That's true. Well, you know, honestly, for me, I'd love to travel and traveling with a show is really, really fun. So mm -hmm. for me, my favorite experience during Full House would have been the Disney World episodes. You yeah, know, we yeah. went down to Florida. We, 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 I mean, I was a teenager basically living and and, you know, I wasn't in every scene. I had plenty of time off to go explore or go on all the rides. It was a dream come true. And um, and by the way, the same goes for Fuller House. My favorite experience of, was our trip to Tokyo, which was just like insane. Like I said, I went back again with my family just because I loved it so much. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the travel episodes are always the most fun for me. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it's great Tokyo being was... on the set, too. I mean, at Warner Brothers is awesome, but. Yeah, those are some of the favorites, I think, mean, for the fans to see those locations. I mean, it was also cool to see you and like, with your Disney background to be in the Disney setting was like a cool little Easter egg crossover for people. Yes, so that's fun. true. I get a lot of that. A lot of a lot of comments on the episode where I dress up like Aladdin. Little little Easter egg. Now there's a Before lot of they called them Easter eggs. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people talking about, you know, both or comparing them or, you know, like this one, Aladdin or Full House. I feel like they're both so awesome and so special and in, in each of their own ways. Do you have like, do you prefer maybe on camera or voice acting? Like, do you have- No, I, I love them or? both. I love, I love them both. And it's really weird because both of those things have been a part of my life now for so long. I mean, I honestly can barely remember when they weren't a part of my life. Like that's how, you know what I mean? They, um, I mean, it's, it's really strange how some of the stuff that I did when I was younger and I didn't know this. I mean, maybe with Aladdin, I knew it because it, I, I had a sense it might be a future classic Disney animated movie. But, but Full House, who would have known that this popular sitcom from the 90s would still be insanely popular? And I'm an old, man. I have, a, I have a kid who's a fan of the show. You know what I mean? It's really, uh, it's really strange that it's still like a, a daily part of our culture. It's very strange. And yeah, cool. We we have let's let's just do one more. We literally have hundreds of questions. So we're gonna have to well. I appreciate it. I'm sorry we can't answer all of them, but um, uh, but I'm we'll, grateful for we'll that. Do it again sometime soon because you got a lot. You got a lot of fans and a lot of questions. This is uh, you got this it. Is the last one. What was it like being back uh, on the set? Now, do you do you have a favorite maybe scene that uh, that you shot or? Sure. Well, being back on set was crazy because it was the same set. <laughs> That's never yeah. happened before. Usually, when a project ends, you know it's sad and you say goodbye and then. You don't expect that you're just going to be that first day when we all showed up at on the stage at Warner Brothers and just the set was back was one of the weirdest days of my life and all of our lives. I mean, the funny thing is, it was so strange and surreal that first day. And then the second day, it was like nothing. It was just like old, like nothing. No time had passed. You know, we just fell back into it. And um, except instead of playing, you know, the, the kid, I was playing one of the grown ups. But um and then as far as like a favorite scene or something, I don't know, what would have been my favorite scene? I, uh, it's really tough. There were so many. I mean, I, I don't even know if I have, like I said, I loved the shooting the Tokyo episode, but I, it was, yeah. I loved so many of those episodes. It was, we got to do so many fun things. They really, 
I don't know. They, they, we just got it all back. All the, you know, the fun that we had the first time we got to do it again this time. And we appreciated it so much more this time because it was such a weird miracle that it came back. Yeah. And, 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 and spoiler alert, if anyone hasn't finished the new season, but when, I mean, not, not to give it away, but we end with a, a wedding. And I got to say, it's an odd thing where the wedding is, ends up in a backyard because so many people right now are literally having backyard wedding that's true we were we were wow when you think about it we were ahead of uh, we were ahead of our time we we, we it was yeah. a quarantine wedding except for you know and there was minor social distancing but no masks but cool. <laughs> no but but you know it's really i mean i was very sad to see the show end but i'm very glad in in hindsight that we were able to wrap it up before this pandemic because we didn't have to wait years in between seasons to get back to shooting all the kids would have been grown up it would have been weird and i <laughs> And I don't know if you noticed that for the wedding, the backyard magically grew like 20 sizes normal, 20, bigger than it normally is to fit everybody. Got bigger. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, no, that was great. I mean, that was a really, you know, that would have definitely, except for the sort of, it was very bittersweet because we knew it was ending, but shooting that wedding stuff was really fun. We had a great time. Well, be, th I appreciate taking the time, buddy. But before we wrap up, I've been ending these things with a little game of at home show and tell. Oh yeah, I did. I brought something. I have an item that's that's a lot of fun that I I just grabbed it off the shelf. I've had it since I was a kid, and Amazing. now my kid uses it. And it's real. Hold on, I'm going to show you this. This was yeah. given to me. It's an Aladdin uh, an Aladdin uh, tchotchke, I guess you could say. It's a giant. It's a cookie wow. jar. It's a genie cookie jar that um, lives on my shelf because I don't want anybody to break it. But I think this is a pretty neat little piece of show and tell. This is um. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, I had, it, it, it was like the lost ark. I couldn't find it for years. It was gone. And I was literally, there was a time where I was like sad that I couldn't find my Aladdin cookie jar. And I even looked on eBay to see if I could find a replacement or whatever. And then my mother moved and she's like, do you want this cookie jar? I was like, there it is. And I said, of course I want it. But I'm a dad now. I got to have the genie cookie jar back on my shelf. But like wow. I said, we, do, we don't fill it with cookies because it, it would yeah. break in. My house is like an elementary school sometimes, you know. <laughs> I just got a phone call. Um, All good, yeah. Oh, you're back. But um, oh, good. So, but um, we it's it's merely decorative now because it's it's gone from being a fun cookie jar in my mom's kitchen to dear God, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's kind of an antique at this point. So <laughs> it's a family heirloom, and so yeah, we want to take care of it. Well, amazing, buddy. And thank uh, you next so time, much I, for next everyone. time I do this with you, I'll bring something fun. I'll bring some new. No, dude, that's uh, that's so cool, man. That's awesome. That's so cool to know that you have a little genie in your house. That's 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 incredible. Yeah, yeah exactly. Whenever I have a wish, I just wish on my cookie jar. <laughs> well, thank uh, you. I've, been very, I've so had a good run so far. They come true. They come true a lot. So it's a good. It works. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to see you. You know, coming back uh, in, in you know in Fuller House and all the work you've done over the years and. I look forward to seeing a lot more. And thanks for everyone who, who was, you know, tuning in and all the questions you submitted and uh, all the and, comments. And, and by the way, the I just want to say also, I, it's hard to reply while we're chatting, but I see all the comments and I, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody for their nice remarks and comments and things. That's very, it's cool. A, this lot, is fun. Of, a lot of hard eyes, a lot of I love you, a lot of, you know, Fuller House and Full House. A lot of waves. And everything. So people, yeah. people well, are, uh, I appreciate it. And by the way, from all over the world too, I'm seeing a lot of flags of different countries. It's yeah. really cool. There's a Brazil right there. It's really, I love it. This is pretty cool. See, yeah. even though we're, even though we're all, we're all isolated, we can still be together. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, distract people for a few moments today. And, 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 and I really appreciate it, man. It's always good running into you and uh, you too. all the best to you, my friend. All right. Same to you. I'll see you soon. All right. Hey, thanks a thank lot, Thank you, Scott. everybody. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. You Bye -bye. too. Everybody wear a mask till it's over. <laughs> See you later.